Hey guys, Seth Perkins here, White Feather Meats, one of the bearded butchers. Today I want to show you how we make smokies. You can use this practice for uh, beef, bison, elk, venison, lamb, whatever you prefer. Um, smokies, aka sticks, we're going to grind them, we're going to stuff them, and then we're going to take them to the Traeger grill and we're going to smoke them. So follow along. Today we're going to start with just over 10 pounds of meat that we've trimmed up, taken most of the fat out of. There's no gristle or anything like that. And we're also going to use just over a pound of pork fat that we're going to go ahead and add to our meat. Now the meat that we used, it's going to be about a 85, 15 or 90, 10, somewhere right in there with the meat to fat ratio. So we want to go ahead and add the pork fat to it and it's just going to give us a nice juicy product in the end when we're done. So um, this is the same principle we apply when we're making our bratwurst. So if you watch the deer bratwurst making video, this is pretty much the same practice that we use there. I want to go ahead and mix the, the fat in a little bit. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to add our seasonings. So Seth's got a total now of 12 pounds of blended lean and the fat trimmings. And he's going to add one six ounce shaker of our Cajun blend. We've chosen Cajun as the flavor for this smoky. Um, the ratio for this is obviously you can use a um, one ounce of, of our blend to any two pounds of meat. So if you wanted to double this recipe, obviously just use two shakers. So 12 pounds of meat, one six ounce bottle of seasoning. Go ahead and just mix it in, blending it as we go. We like to put the spices on the trimmings before we grind them. And then what we're, we're actually gonna be doing um, a triple grind on this just because we wanna make it a finer bite when we do our, our smokies. So we'll put the spices on before we grind and then that'll blend it in as we grind. So we'll go coarse ground one time and then we'll do uh, a finer grind two times. So after we add our six ounce bottle of Cajun Beard Butcher Blend seasoning, you also want to use a tinted cure. So this is a nitrite. Um, for 12 pounds, we're going to use a half of an ounce of pink tinted cure. You can get this Walton's Inc. You can get this at uh, butcherpacker.com. It comes usually in a one ounce pack that does 25 pounds of meat. We simply split that pack. We're going to go ahead and add it to our mix. So you want to get this, this pink curing salt mixed into the meat thoroughly. So not only will we mix it here, but we'll also, it'll get another mix in the grinder. So we're going to go ahead and add the nitrates in there, mixing it as we go. So you notice I mixed about half the bag the first round. So I'm going to go ahead and just add the rest. This is gonna give the meat a nice pink color. Um, also, it's going to help control the risk of botulism, the C-bot. Um, the, the spores could survive a low oxygen, which that's what happens when you smoke something, environment, and you, you basically give it a window of time. Um, so by, by adding the nitrite, especially with game meats, um, it's really gonna help prevent that um, botulism spore from causing any problems with your smokies. So this product, in the end, it will not be shelf stable. So we are gonna plan on vacuum sealing them. You can freeze them. You can keep them in your refrigerator. Um, but once you open them, you do wanna eat them within uh, you know, the day or so. So let's go ahead and let's just get started grinding. So we're using the Weston number 12, really like this grinder. And so it's gonna go ahead and put it through our seven millimeter, which is just over a quarter inch coarse ground plate. First, he'll grind the entire batch through. 
and then we'll repeat that with the smaller 4.5 millimeter which is just over an eighth of an inch and we'll plan on doing that twice so as you can see um it's nice to leave some of your your trimmings into strips when you leave your meat in a strip the grinder will actually grab it and it'll pull it into the worm a little easier so just keep that in mind when you're cutting it's a little bit easier to grind when you do leave it into a little bit of a strip so let's go ahead and get started you want to put a little bit down inside your grinder before you turn it on that way it doesn't run, uh, run dry and uh, cause any friction with the metal with the blades in the in the grinder As you can see, this number 12 um, will go through this 12 pounds of meat in a pretty big hurry. One of the great things about grinding multiple times is that we have the fat and the lean ratio. We're gonna we're gonna blend that up each time we grind. We're gonna continue to reduce it in size, and then it's just gonna make a much better blend for the finished product. So. We found that practice spices before you grind. Grind it with the spices. You don't have to worry too much about your fat to lean ratio at the trim level. Sending, in other words, when you send it through the grinder, just kind of because we're going to be hand mixing this one more time after it's coarse ground and then grinding fine grind two more times, you're going to see that blend will sort of even itself out. There you have it, just a space of just over two and a half minutes. We've ground out the 12 pounds with our coarse plate. Now we're gonna switch to our fine plate and grind it two more times. So at this point, you're just gonna to wanna to take and blend everything with your hands. One more time, smelling really good. That's just gonna evenly distribute the spice and then also, like I mentioned, the fat to lean ratio. So we like to just knead it, fold everything back together. This is after the coarse grind and before we start the fine grind. So we've switched over to a smaller plate and let's get started on grind number two. So if you notice on the first round, we did not have to use the plunger because of the way that Seth had the strips cut. You're gonna wanna have it ready for this second round just because it's not it's not going to really feed itself. But what Seth's going to be doing here is he's just making sort of uh, golf salt, golf sized balls and dropping them into the auger um, and just letting it work through at its own pace. As you grind um, that second grind, and then of course you're using a finer plate, it's going to take a little bit longer you're breaking this muscle down even further it's not going to go quite as fast as that first grind so you'll just want to work through this process at whatever pace the grinder can take don't want to overdo it so that's probably got about a quarter of it run through there in this first minute all right grind number three Second time through the fine, we call it a fine, but a seven and a half, excuse me, 4.5 millimeter, translates to around an eighth of an inch. You can see that this still has some of the, the fat pieces in there that are a little bit big. So we wanna go ahead and give it one more grind just to break those pieces down a little bit more. That way, in the finished product, it makes it a little bit more palatable, a little bit easier to choose. So let's go ahead and get started. Now mind you, you can, you can get probably even another grind out of this. Eventually what will happen is 
this will get so warm and they um the proteins will start to bind and you just you almost not get it through the grinder there's tricks to the trade you could add ice um certainly don't stop here if, if you feel like you've got the time and the, the energy to, to keep going you'll just get a smoother and smoother bite but we found for all practical purposes as you can see we broke that down quite well and a single coarse grind and two what we call fine grinds does the trick for us so go ahead and get this ground out start stuffing all right Third grind is complete now. At this point, we're gonna add some water because it, it'll get sticky as you grind it. And so there's no way that you're going to get this through the stuffer without moistening it up. So how much water do you have there, Seth? I have two cups of water. Now, you can kind of feel as you mix this, the consistency. And if you feel like, you know, a lot of it depends on the species that you're working with, whether it's deer or bison or beef or you know lamb or whatever you're working with um, it's gonna uh, kind of react differently to the moisture that you put in it so just kind of use your own judgment you can feel when it starts to loosen up um, you may not need the full two cups so I would say I have this at a point where you can see it's it's very pliable um, but yet it's not too mushy because if you make it too mushy um, your, what will happen is your smokies in the end, um, they'll wrinkle up real bad and they're just, they're not gonna be as desirable. So go ahead and get it to about this consistency right here. And then at this point, we're gonna go ahead and add just over a pound of high temp pepper jack cheese to our Cajun smokies. So this is like Seth mentioned, a high melt cheese. It comes in these uh, nice little diced up cubes. And the reason it's high melt is when we put it in our smoker, it won't actually melt. It'll still be, uh, it'll pretty much just look like, just like that. Now we get this cheese for our shop in large quantities. Um, we happen to live near Amish country, one of the bigger cheese suppliers in the world, Troyer Cheese. Um, you can find this online. Just look for a, a high temperature or high melt cheese. You can use uh, any flavor that you find. We like to go at about a 10% ratio. So Seth mentioned he had about 1.2 pounds here. And he folds that into the mixture. And then at this point, we can convert it over to our stuffer and start making some sticks. All right, so mixture goes into your stuffer. Now, all these are not created equal, but similar. Um, manual crank stuffer. This one happens to be uh, a little bit more of a commercial model just because it's what we have here at the shop. It has a 25 pound capacity. Obviously 12 pounds is going to kill half of it. So stuffer loaded and we're going to go ahead and get started cranking out some Smokies. So we like a 17 millimeter um, mahogany collagen casing now in this case it doesn't actually fit on our stuffing horn otherwise you could just slide the entire thing on there but it's too tight so if you have this problem you can just manually transfer it if you will right onto your stuffing horn so that's just a little tip you can make a smoky of smaller diameter with a stuffing horn that's a little bit too big just by transferring the casing this way so just to stress, normally we just stack the whole thing on there if we had a smaller stuffing horn, but in this case, we manually transfer it. So Seth ties a little knot, and he's going to start bringing out some Smokies. So at this point, you want to try to avoid air gaps. Um, this stuffer has a feature where there's a a little valve in the top of the plunger that you just press and it will shoot all, all the air out of the top of the plunger. Um, if you did get air, maybe when you start at the end, you could just simply poke a little hole in it. But there's our first strand. So we'll go ahead and get these 12 pounds out of here, cut them to length and get them on our smoker. So there's the result, 12 pounds. 
Now what we've done is we've just gone ahead and licked them, um, or looped them rather, um, 24 inches in length, because we know that's what's gonna fit on our smoker tray, so we're just gonna lay it in there. You can individually link these at this point. You could twist them. Um, yeah, so that's, that's up to you. What we've done, the method that we like to do is we just go ahead and smoke them in long strands like this, and then after we're done smoking, which we'll show you, we just go ahead and chop them up into the portions that you'd like. As you can see, there's no air bubbles in there. They're, they're stuffed real nice and tight. And you can also see our chunks of cheese. And folks, these are ready to go on the smoker. So we have our Traeger Ironwood 885 in super smoke mode. Our tray of Smokies. And we're just gonna go ahead and get them loaded in the smoker. We're gonna stair step this in temperature. We're gonna start out at 165 for two hours. Then we're gonna to go to 185 for two hours. And then we'll finish at 205 for two hours until they hit an internal temperature of 160 to 165. So we're actually using Traeger's Big Game Blend. It's white, red oak, hickory with rosemary herbs. And so we've just filled up our smoker, left uh, a little bit of an air gap between, so that way the smoke can go through there. Obviously you wanna probe it right in the center. And then like mentioned, 165 for two hours, 185 for two hours, and then 205 until it reaches an internal of 165. We'll come back when it's done. All right, so four hours have passed. We hit internal 165, and we never did have to bump up to 205. We just went from an oven temp of 165 up to 185, and now we're internal temp of 165, and it's time to pull these beauties off of here. We're going to transfer them onto a wire rack, and um, multiple ways you can do this. In this case, we're just going to rinse them with cold water. So that way they cool down a little bit quicker. So we're gonna, now that we've reached that internal high temp, we just wanna bring the internal temp back down in a timely manner. So we'll take these in and rinse them off with some cold water. So the idea here is we're just gonna use cold water speed up the process of uh, cooling these down. At this point, it'll also soften the casings a bit. Um, this step's optional. You can also put them in a cold water bath. Once we've got a um, nice bath, say a minute or so, we'll transfer these to the cooler and then once we're cooled down to uh, 40 degrees internal, we'll go ahead and cut them up and pack them up. All right, so these Smokies have beautiful color. They're cooled down, and we're going to go ahead and cut them. So we, um, we had 12 pounds of meat. We added the spices, the cheese, the, the water. Um, so we'd had right around 14 and a half pounds of start weight, and we're left with right around 9.5. Uh, we, we already ate a little bit, so maybe a little closer to 10 pounds finished weight. So... So that's just gonna go through here and show you a good way to measure these out. You can do a number of them at a time, so just go ahead and line them up. Usually what I do is use the palm of my hand to about the tip of your thumb. You can measure them out that way. Gives you a nice size stick filled with that delicious cheese. start stacking them up so we wanted to mention um, we obviously started with the trimmings we added the pork it's summertime and deer season is going to be right around the corner here before we know it so if you have a freezer with ground meat in it just plain ground venison um, it could have pork in it or whatever and you feel like you're not going to go through the remainder of it just as ground venison by the end of this year or before the new season starts 
you can by all means go ahead and grab those ground venison packs and put them in um, put them through this process obviously they've been ground one time so you can forget about you know grinding starting with the trimmings like we did but you can you can mix your seasonings in before you grind and basically if you're sitting there going what am i going to do with my ground meat i haven't eaten it take a day and you with the, with the use of a a grinder a stuffer the seasonings and then obviously a, a smoker you can uh, absolutely turn this product out just like this now the smoker that step if you if you have something that's uh, obviously we use the traeger but if you have uh, that's a pellet smoker if you have anything that you can really control your your house temp what we call the house temp which would be their smoker temperature and you can you can start it out around um, no higher than 165 you could be cooler if you wanted for a couple hours just just while those those pores are open in the meat before they close up and, and get that smoke in there and then then you can just stair step your temperatures up to bring your internal meat temperature up and it's just going to be a matter of time at that point like i mentioned we did this in in four hours flat just a little over four hours to reach an internal of 165 so what we can do at this point is we can either put these in a Ziploc bag, we can put them in a simply a poly bag with a twisty tie, or we can vacuum seal them and freeze them. That's what we like to do if you have this many and you're not going to go through them because what we what we say is they're not they're not necessarily shelf stable. That's more of a water activity thing and you'd have to continue drying them down. Um, a pH water activity thing. So these we would not consider these to be shelf stable um, they're going to be fine in your you know a day or something like that if you're packing them around but um, what we'd like to do is as we say like um, a week or so in your fridge obviously frozen it's pretty much indefinite so what we would do at this point is we just go ahead and stack these in the free in the freezer and put them in your lunch box pass them out to friends take them out one at a time they're going to thaw out really quick. You can see that cheese, that high temp cheese in there. And a very successful day of turning some ground meat, trimmings, whatever you have, into some wonderful Smokies. Delicious. Don't forget, check us out on Facebook. Instagram, and here on YouTube, and don't forget to subscribe. We'll have more videos to come. Thanks, guys.